God bless you. Welcome back to our daily devotional video here on day number 20 already. Day number 20. It's been quite a journey and I'm excited because we're just about getting to the end of this booklet. We have a few more days left. Amen. But uh, today we're going to start with our video and before we will start with a prayer. So please join me in our prayer. Father, I thank you for this video that you've given me the privilege to do. I feel blessed and I feel honored that you've called on me for this. And as I gather with these viewers, with everyone that's gathered, these brothers and sisters that are here gathering, listening to your word, praising your name. Father, I pray that you enter in their house and that you bless them. I pray that anything that becomes an obstacle to prevent us from communion with you, from prayer with you, from this time with you, I pray that you remove that in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit guide us through this meditation, through this devotional. I pray that your Holy Spirit touch the heart and the life of each viewer today. I pray, Father, that we come away from this different, changed, edified, and built up somehow. Father, speak to us. Through your word, speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're on day number 20. Day number 20, it says, Loved and Forever Loving. That is the title today. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. Psalm 52, verse 8. Maybe you've seen it. The mirage on the highway or in the gully just ahead in the heat of summer. It tricks your eyes into thinking that an oasis, a river, a lake filled with cool water lies directly in your path and not all that far away. But when you arrive at the point where the lake should be, you find nothing but hot asphalt or burning sand. The mirage has now moved. Now the lake lies just ahead of you again, tempting you to chase it. No matter how fast you travel, you'll never catch up to the mirage. It will remain forever elusive, always just out of reach. The Samaritan woman described in John 4, verse 4 to 30, may well have believed she was chasing mirages. She had chalked up several failed marriages and was now again living with a man, though they were not married. As she made her daily trip to collect water from the well, she was thirsty, not so much for water, but for genuine love, for forgiveness and acceptance. Her hard life had not hardened her heart, not completely. Jesus knew all of the above. He knew of her thirst. That's why he waited for her at the well. He wanted to offer more than she could have imagined, living water. The forgiveness and mercy of God, a place to belong in his family, his own everlasting love. Jesus freely offered it to her. He offers it to you as well. The love that your Lord has for you never fails. It is constant, eternal. Nothing you have done or could ever do disqualifies you from receiving his love. Absolutely nothing. Your every sin has been crossed out, forgiven through Christ's cross. Let that sink in. Jesus loves you. He always has and he always will. He has made you part of God's family through faith, and you belong to him. The living water is no mirage. You don't need to chase after it. Your savior showers it on you freely. See how much, see how very much our father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. And that is 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Lord Jesus, 
I am thirsty. Quench my need for joy and peace in your everlasting love today. Amen. What a great, great um, topic to talk on today. I think it's very interesting that many people like the Samaritan woman often are chasing love and they seem, it seems to elude them. I don't know if you have had, I'm sure everyone at some point has had some bad relationship or some bad connection maybe. At least a lot of people have. And when you have a person who's come from so many relationships and they come out hurt, they move on to another one. Sometimes they haven't healed from the previous relationship. And then they come into that with all the scars from the previous relationship. And that just kind of blurs out the goodness of the new one and, and it ends up hindering the new relationship. And then it's a cycle again. Then that one ends and it becomes another so it's a continuous cycle, and it seems like you're chasing something that eludes you. And that's because you cannot get from a person, you cannot get from a relationship what only God can give to you. The love that you crave so much, and this is advice that I would give to the youth. When you are looking for a partner for life, when you're looking for a husband, a wife, Look to God first. Look and reach out to God first. Because when you reach out to God first and he satisfies your soul how he did with that Samaritan woman, he fills you with peace and joy. Then you can enter into relationships. A lot of people complain, well, my girlfriend is clingy. Oh, my boyfriend's too obsessed. Or is it? And sometimes it's just because they're wanting that extra ingredient that is not found in the relationship. It is found in Christ. And they're seeking that out, but they feel like they have to control and they have to get closer and they have to hold on. And, and it becomes overwhelming to be in a relationship like that. But when you go to Christ first and he satisfies your soul, you don't have that constant need for attention. You don't have that constant need to chase after someone because what you need, the peace you need is already there. If you are in the process of entering a relationship or if you're about to enter one, go to God first. Get on your knees. Ask God to fill you with the peace and the joy that he filled that Samaritan woman with. Put that everlasting water, that that everlasting water in you. And when you are filled and overjoyed, whatever relationship God puts you in, you will be a blessing. You will become a blessing in that relationship, in that family. You'll be a fountain that produces fruit, that produces joy, that produces something good into your family. Bring something good into your family. Don't rush into it. Society will tell you, the world will tell you, rush into another relationship. Rush, rush. You need attention. You need love. You need, no, you don't need all of that. Especially they push you and, and promote a lot of, of the physical relationship. And that's something they really want to hold off on. Because it hurts a lot more. It hurts a lot more once you're intimate with someone, you have a connection with them. A deeper connection. And then it hurts a lot more to let go. And some people can say, well, no, I don't have. Well, you can go on telling yourself that story. But the reality is that as long as you're running from one hand to another, but you're not running to Jesus, there's something going to be missing in your life. His steadfast love. His love is the only one that will truly fill you. Amen. I want to sing a song. It's called the steadfast love. Amen. <laughs> we 
surely does not even though we mess up and I have messed up and I'm sure you probably have to at some point but even though we messed up God somehow finds a way to get us back he pursues us he gives us uh, the love that no one else can give because a lot of times when we hurt people when we do things that don't please them, they don't give us that love. They don't do that pursuit. They'll walk away. But God is not like that. Even though you might have failed him, even though you might have offended him somehow, but he still comes after you saying, come back. Come back. I love you. I thank God because he's pursued me. And even when I have fallen away, and I don't mean falling away, everyone has different ways of falling away. And to me, falling away is like if my prayer life is lacking or just I haven't read the Bible in a long time. To me, that's falling away because then the spirit um, gets weakened, right? And then I pursue the flesh. And so when I come to these moments in my life where I've fallen away, somehow God gets my attention. And I can hear him saying, wake up, Christina, it's time to get up. You, you can't keep doing this. That's God's love. Because believe it or not, when we fall away from God, what the flesh wants and desires brings only destruction to our lives. But God brings us life and life eternally. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I thank you 
that you have been with us throughout this devotional. And I thank you for this reminder of your constant, constant love. I thank you, God, that despite our faults, our difficulties, our, our shortcomings, God, you are not one to sit there and just criticize us all day, but you tell us to get up, clean ourselves off, and keep moving, not stay where we are, but to get up. Father, I pray if someone that is watching this video has fallen away, that you help them to lift themselves up. If someone that is watching this video feels alone, feels unloved, feels uncherished, I pray that you pour your everlasting water into them. And like the Samaritan woman, that they can feel your joy your peace instantly take over their life, God. Not tomorrow, not later. Instantly feel your joy and your peace in their life, God. Father, let this be a testimony to them that you do love them and that you want the best for them, God. Father, I pray blessings over these viewers, over their families, God, over their home, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free.